these examples we're going to do are the type two, so we're going to have vertical asymptotes. So what we're doing is we're looking at what happens to an area as we approach a vertical asymptote. Just like the type one um, improper integrals, we might have some that diverge. The, that limit may be infinite, or the area may be infinite, so we would say the integral diverges. Uh, sometimes the even though we have an infinite height, we're going to have a finite area. And so both of those things could be happening here. Uh, first example we're going to do looks like this. Looks like a normal integral. But the problem is what? Discontinuous at 2. It is discontinuous at 2, right? It's not defined at 2. And what are we going to have at 2? At x equals 2. We're going to have a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So even though this is just a normal looking integral, if we were to take the antiderivative and try plugging in our limits, we're going to have a problem at 2 because it can't equal 2. Okay, it's going to be undefined there. So what we have to do is rewrite this with a limit. We're just going to approach 2. We're not going to actually go all the way to 2, but we're just going to approach it and get really close to it. So when we do that, we're going to write it as a limit. And notice that I wrote it that we're approaching 2 from the left. Since we're going from 1 to 2, we're going to approach 2 from the left. So we have this vertical asymptote that we're going to approach from the left. And now we have an integral right here, a definite integral, that we can evaluate. Because we know that a is going to be something less than 2. And we don't have any problems with discontinuities as long as we're less than 2. So now we evaluate this integral right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I have in the brackets and rewrite it. And we'll evaluate that off to the side. And we'll come back and continue our line of thought up above. So how are we going to take the antiderivative of 1 over x minus 2? Natural log. We're going to use the natural log, right? So this is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2 evaluated from 1 to a. Now, this number right here, 1 is clearly less than 2, but a is also going to be less than 2. Does everybody understand why a has to be less than 2? Because we're approaching from the left. So since 1 and a are both less than 2, then what can I do with this absolute value here? Okay, can I just remove it? Just get rid of it completely? It would be the opposite of it, right? So if I, a, an easy way to check that, if I just plug 1 in here, uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So this would actually be the absolute value of positive 1, right? Because when we take the absolute value, we switch the sign. So since both of these numbers are less than 2, we're going to get a negative number inside of the absolute value. So it's going to be the opposite of that. So it's going to be negative x plus 2, or we could write it as 2 minus x. So plugging those in, notice that I switched the order here. Um, and I really only had to worry about it for the a. When I do a minus 2, again, that's going to be a negative. So to get rid of the absolute value, I'm just going to write it as 2 minus a. So I have the natural log of 2 minus a here, and then minus the natural log of 1 here. What is the natural log of 1? Zero. Zero. So it's really just the natural log of 2 minus a. What we've done here is we have shown that this definite integral here is equal to this natural log here. So what can I do with this? I can plug it in up here where the brackets are, right? So instead of the limit as a approaches 2 from the left of that integral, now I have the limit as a approaches 2 from the left of the natural log. This is something we can evaluate. Now there's a few different ways we could evaluate this. We could just try plugging in numbers and see what happens. Um, this is a horizontal flip and a horizontal shift of the natural <coughs> log function. And so if you understand how those transformations work, you might be able to look at it graphically. Um, or we could use substitution. If we substitute and just say b is 2 minus a, and I'm doing that so that I can simplify this natural log, what I'm going to do then is rewrite it in a way that uh, makes it a little bit easier. So if b is 2 minus a, then what is b going to approach? If I put 2 in for a, what do I get? 0. But I'm plugging in numbers a little bit less than 2. So 2 minus a number a little bit less than 2 is a number a little bit bigger than 0. 
So another way of doing this is using substitution and rewriting it like this. I'm not saying that you should do it this way, but this is one option if you want to simplify the problem. Reduce it to a problem that we know how to do more easily. Um, no matter how you do it, we end up getting the limit here approaches what? What is the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of the natural log? Negative infinity here. So what does that mean about this integral? What would we say here? The integral diverges. So we're not going to say that it has infinite area or negative infinite area. We're just going to say that the integral diverges. That's the terminology we'll use.